Welcome back. We are here with another Teacher of the Year profile. We're speaking now with Susan Abbott, who is one of two Teachers of the Year for the Elk Grove Unified School District. Thanks for joining us. Thank you. So tell us about yourself. Tell us what kind of teacher you are and where you teach. I am a um, high school English teacher. I teach at Sheldon High School in South Sacramento for the Elk Grove Unified School District. I teach um, 10th grade and 12th grade English and advanced placement literature. Mm. So tell us, what do you focus on in 10th, in 10th 11th grade uh, English? Now, what are the... In 10th grade English, there's, there are 9th and 10th grade standards and 11th and 12th grade standards. So in 10th grade, we're really um, locking down your writing skills in terms of writing a complete thesis or claim, understanding that there are different purposes for writing, whether you're writing for persuasion or whether you're mm -hmm. writing um, informational text or you're writing a synthesis essay like a research paper. We're also developing critical reading skills so and practicing the tools of annotation and questioning and, and looking up words and understanding informational texts um, by yourself as well as in groups and working in a classroom setting. We're also practicing academic vocabulary. Tenth grade is really a critical year in practicing the language of school, the language of academics, and, and in many ways the language of the workplace. You wouldn't, you know, I tell my sophomores, you wouldn't tell somebody at work, that was a dumb idea, why did you think of that <laughs> um, the way you just did in this classroom? Instead, you might say, I don't fully agree with your answer, and the part that I, I disagree is this for this reason I propose. And so practicing the academic um, language of the subject area, English, but also interpersonal skills, discussion skills, those kind of things. That can't be more valuable, I mean, <laughs> really, don't you think, in the yes. workplace today? Or not just in the workplace, but as they advance in their academic careers? Well, and often the, they don't know what they don't have. They don't know that the workplace is going to insist on this. And something I've been working with a lot lately is really focusing on listening skills. They are very casual listeners because it, this generation that's very connected digitally does many things at once. They think that they can have a conversation with earbuds in their ears and, you know, and, and driving and somebody else. I mean, they just, they try to do everything at once. And I tell them, you have to be able to listen deeply in the workplace. I so, said, you know, my boss rarely calls me into her office and sits me down and blocks out all distractions and says, this is what I want you to do. No, I'll be walking across campus and she'll go, come here, come here, come here. I've been meaning to tell you. Da, 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 da. And then she walks away and I have to remember all that. And she thinks those are actionable items that I am responsible now to do what she told me. I have to be able to listen and take away distractions and pay attention to her. And these are skills that kids need practice with that young people don't come to innately. And so, young people are very distracted now. Yeah, and, mm -hmm. so, and so we practice those overtly. We teach those overtly, not just assume that they know how to do that. And so once you start that, what kind of progress do you see from day one to the final day of how they're able to absorb information and, and state what they feel and how they feel. In the beginning, it feels contrived and awkward a little bit. They think I'm being fussy and I'm asking a lot of them. And you are. <laughs> but I it, am a but little for fussy. A purpose. Yeah. <laughs> but, yeah. but I continue to model it. Um, from the minute they walk in the door, I am always in, I always refer to myself as Mrs. Abbott and I always have my academic voice on. And I say, when I'm at home and speaking to my kids and my student, my children have gone to the school so some of them know me, I have a different voice, but this is my workplace. This is my job. And when we're in here, we're all earning a seat and you earn that seat by using this language. And you keep that seat by using this language. This is the way we talk to each other. And, and in the beginning, it's hard. In the middle, they start winking at me like all of a sudden they'll roll out. Well, I somewhat agree and somewhat disagree with <laughs> what you're saying. And they look at me like, right? Yeah. And I'm like, <laughs> you know, and, um, and I talk to them about that specificity of language is the key to, to really communicating what you feel. And that also is combined with specificity of listening. So sometimes I trip them up and they're working in their groups. And I say, okay, we're going to, um, 
share all our information and I'm going to call in a group, but this is what I want to hear. If I call on you, I want you to brag about your partner. I want you to tell me about his or her idea and why you remember it and what it said to you. And well, that's an unfair trick. And I said, do you need a moment? <laughs> yeah. And they say, yeah. I said, you have one more moment. <laughs> I said, okay. okay, are we ready now? All right. <clears throat> Juan, what did, sh what partner, which partner are you bragging about? Okay, I'm going to brag about Brittany. What did Brittany say? And now Juan is practicing seeing the skills of paraphrasing. He's putting Brittany's words into his words. He's looking at her for acknowledgement that he's expressed her idea correctly, and he's connecting it to his own thinking. Um, one of the great things about that is compulsive participators love to talk, so you can call on them, but they're actually bragging about maybe the quiet person, the person who's a little bit more passive and less likely to raise their hand. And then I swing and I say, Brittany, what an interesting idea. What did you think about Juan's connection to your idea? And then I say, is there anybody else in the group who wants to comment on Brittany's idea? And those are the ways you would speak in the workplace too. So practicing those skills, that's what we do a lot of in 10th grade. And then hopefully several years down the road, they realize, <laughs> oh, that, there was purpose to that. There was purpose to that. <laughs> <laughs> so now let's talk about the AP courses that you teach, AP literature. Mm -hmm. What are, what are students these days studying? The same things they studied a long time ago the in a lot of ways. Yes, the classics from Oedipus to Hamlet to Invisible Man. Um, and then some of the newer things, Wilma Warrior, um, Maya Angelou, um, some of the modern writers um, that are more people who have things published on articles on the internet now. One of my favorite assignments in in AP is they take the exam in early May and there's still about five weeks left of school and they say, we're done, right? I said, no, we're not done. <laughs> and we were reading a postmodern novel, Woman Warrior, and she was talking, it's an immigrant experience. She grew up in Stockton. Maxine Hunkingston is a writer in residence and professor at Berkeley, so that, you know, they all want to go to UC, so they're excited. I said, you could take one of her classes. And she talks about some of the issues that she had transitioning with her parents transitioning to America and being American born. And um, she, in the last chapter, she says 200 things I needed to tell my mother. She has this long list of 200 things that she thinks her mother needs to know. And so one of the assignments I gave them is, I said, teach me something you think I need to know. What's something Mrs. Abbott needs to know that I don't know about? And we've been practicing. We now have Google Chromebooks because mm -hmm. of the testing, the state testing is on. Um, the computer now and so we have the Chrome card in there and I hand him and then I just step back and I said I want you to create you know a, a doc um, that you can share as a slide share and give a presentation teach me something I didn't know and it was very interesting um, one group taught me about the mattress girl the girl at the University who carries a mattress on her back 24 7 because she had been sexually assaulted in college and she wanted, she didn't feel it was addressed appropriately, so symbolically she carries this mattress on her back. And she's back east and then people volunteer and carry the mattress for her. And, and what does that mean to volunteer and carry someone's pain for them? And they connected, they had to connect it back to the Maxine Hanks Kingston story. What does it mean to carry someone else's pain or, or to acknowledge someone else's pain? didn't know about her. Another group um, at our school, we have the Biotech Academy, a lot of kids studying science and it's connected to UC Davis. And they shared with me that not all medical research is accessible to everyone on the internet like you think it would be. You have to pay a fee to have access to these journals digitally, like the AMA, et cetera. I didn't realize that. I thought you could just get that. And that the fees are easily paid by big universities, like Yale, you know, the Yale, the UCs, et cetera. But there, there are smaller schools and certainly places around the world that don't have the resources to access this databases because they're very expensive. And they argued persuasively that medical research, that kind of information needs to be available free and without these discriminatory practices 
um, that financially make it hard for small groups of people to get information that everybody else can get and that it creates this elitist system. It's something I did not know. So they taught you a lot they taught that me you didn't a lot. know. And you taught us a lot <laughs> about what we didn't know about you. Thank you for joining us. We Thank appreciate you. it very much. We've been speaking with Susan Abbott, who is one of two teachers over the year for the Elk Grove Unified School District. Congratulations again. Thank you very much.